this is a quick little video just to talk about PostgreSQL and CockroachDB and give a quick comparison of the two of them. Um, first of all, if I would be remiss if I didn't start any conversation about Postgres without talking about how amazing it is and how incredible it has it's been to us over the course of the past, oh gosh, 20 or 30 years, uh, you know, powering so many applications. And it is a, it's an incredible open source project built by a lot of great people and, and extremely powerful and, and incredibly reliable. Now, over the past few years, there's been a couple of different versions of Postgres. I think, you know, people will still download and run it on their laptops. It's valuable to them. It's great to get running. Um, but, but I think the common way in which people kind of consume Postgres these days or at least it's becoming the, the kind of standard, is as a service. You know, AWS offers it as part of their RDS offering. You know, Google Cloud SQL, um, you know, they offer it as well. And it's kind of Postgres but better because you don't have to actually install or download or deal with it or upgrade it and maintain it and operate it, right? And these, these cloud services are fantastic. They work, right? What we want to talk about today is how CockroachDB can actually deliver even a better experience than that. Um, and it really kind of comes back to the kind of core architecture and, and really kind of the core concerns and, when, and really when PostgreSQL was built. It was kind of built for a monolithic world, right? And so I want to talk through three different areas where, you know, Postgres and some of these services um, have some limitations. Now, I'm not saying they're horrible. I'm not saying they're, like, unusable by any means. I think there are some limitations and there's some things that, you know, you may or may not uh, be concerned with or are aware of. And so let's just talk through these three, right? First of all, let's talk scale. First of all, scale in a Postgres database is typically done, you know, via vertical scale, right? So if you want to actually, you know, increase the storage or increase throughput for the number of transactions, you just kind of get a bigger machine. Um, and then if you want to actually go beyond that limit, once you have the, the biggest machine you can get, you can get horizontal scale by, mon by manual sharding, where you're basically splitting the database into a couple of different databases and then kind of manually understanding where data lives, right? And so there's lots of different complexities when you start to manual shard database, but is this, this is kind of the, the state of the art when you want to actually scale out Postgres. Now, there's some tools that have been invented over the past couple of years that maybe help automate some of this process, but still doesn't address really the, the second concern, and that's around resilience. And when I think about a, a monolithic or kind of a stovepipe database, right, Typically, the way that we, we, we perform failover, we, we get backup or disaster recovery is through these active passive setups. They're good, they've worked for years, but they do have their limitations. What's the RTO, RPO? Um, how do you remediate uh, different events when they happen? You know, when an, active goes th when an active or the primary system goes down and the secondary comes online, how long does that take? Uh, you know, when the active or the primary comes back on, how do you make the differences between these? How do you synchronize between them? And how do you make sure the data is correct all the time? I think there's some interesting ways in which we've addressed that over the past couple of years, but there's still some, some limitations in that method, right? And then finally, you know, your users aren't in one place anymore. Uh, or maybe they are, but, you know, you want to expand. Um, and so when you start to go multi-region with one of these databases, it is absolutely complex. And, you know, I think the, the state of the art has always been, you know, synchronize data between two different locations and then have, you know, databases set up in different parts of the planet to serve as customers. And, and really kind of creates lag, it creates uh, inconsistencies across various different, the various different instances of the database. And then mostly it's incredibly complex and incredibly costly to maintain this because you have you know, two instances of the same thing up and running, right? And so there, these are kind of like three core limitations that on which, you know, really CockroachDB was built to address. You know, for, for Cockroach, you know, we really think of scale as the, the ultimate problem of every application. You know, I, I think resilience is almost a function of scale as well. Multi-region and expansion is just geographic scale, right? But it all starts with familiar SQL for us. This is, you know, CockroachDB is a relational database. Um, it's wire compatible with Postgres, so it's the same syntax. You get referential integrity, normalization, you know, all the things that you expect out of a relational database, but also uh, dependent on serializable isolation. So we do offer the highest level of isolation in our database. Now, scale for Cockroach is fairly simple and straightforward. You simply post a, you just spin up a node, point it at the cluster, and the cluster instantly expands. And you've, you've expanded both the volume of data that you can have, but since every node in Cockroach, in Cockroach DB can accept uh, reads and writes, is it's an endpoint. You've also scaled out reads and writes as well. 
And then we can scale even further. We can scale across multiple di different regions. In fact, we excel at this. Um, and, and, and we do this so that you, know, you can actually expand to, into more regions of the planet, but we can also do this so that you can be resilient to, say, an entire regional failure. You know, we have some pretty kind of discrete controls or very exact controls, I just say, um, at the row level for each table in terms of what you want to survive. Do you want to survive the failure of a, of a server, a rack, a data center, what have you? Uh, we can help you do that, right? And, you know, that's just basically a simple configuration of the database, and you're going to be ensured that your data is, is always correct and always available. Now, starting with Cockroach is pretty easy. You can get a, an instance, basically, of Postgres right now. We are Postgres compatible. So you could go to our website, cockroachlabs.com, upper right, start instantly. Uh, you could get going with a serverless instance right now, and you're going to have a, a Cockroach DB instance, and you'll be speaking Postgres right away. I've, I've set this up with several different tools that just use the Postgres drivers, and, and away I go. Um, it is free to use, uh, you know, five gigabytes of storage, 250 million request units a month, so... Uh, it's an it's a arbitrary kind of um, abstraction of, of number of queries. Um, if you're not into the multi-tenant or the, 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 the pure hosted where I have no control, you want your own environment, we do offer CockroachDB dedicated as well. So um, thanks for listening. I hope this was valuable uh, and have a great day.